Thank you, thank you. How are you feeling having had an off season now to, to, to truly kind of recoup and recover from your foot? Yeah, I feel good. Um, I've been training since I left and um, got out here and felt good. Um, it's been a good off season. feel good. For you, Derek, as, as you kind of gear up for another season, you kind of continue to do what you've done. You had anything new? What, what's kind of been the plan? Really, the the, the, um, the same stuff. Um, I've been working with uh, PT uh, Luke Miller, who uh, worked under the guy who did my surgery, and um, you know, doing a lot of footwork and you know, making sure that you know, finding my toes. He always tells me that when I'm working out. Just all all type of different stuff. Just so you know, I'm balancing my foot. Uh, I feel good, and you know, running hills, um, doing restricted running. And you know, being on the field, catching the ball, just doing all those type of things to make sure I'm ready. What would you say the status of the foot is at this point? How long has this been since I played? Foot good. <laughs> foot is good. Ryan had when he came back, he said that that loss to the band was it put him in a dark place to the point where he had to do therapy and things like that. Uh, I'm not saying you had to do mm -hmm. that, but what did you do to kind of like work through such a disappointing loss, being as though the opportunity you guys had? Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely was tough. I'm um, actually seeing Ryan. I think like back in March, we both had a uh, sign in Alabama. We was talking about it, and he was saying like, he was in a dark place, and I was like, I felt the same way. You know, it was just tough, and you know, we all expected it to to do more and uh, play a lot better, and we just weren't good enough. And you know, they were the better team, but you know, anytime like that, you know, a loss always hurts when you know you've. Feel like you got everything promised, everything in front of you, and you just you just fall short. So it was tough, but def, def, definitely fueled me in the off season. I sound like a broken record because we you know keep doing the same thing. But you know, all, you got, all you can do is let it fuel you and get ready for the next one. A day on average, you figure you're you're in the gym working out or lifting or, or, or whatever. Yeah, a lot. Um, I probably uh, get up probably about seven thirty with my daughter. Um, let my girl go work out, and then I'll go work out probably like at uh, at ten thirty. And then I come back, eat lunch, and I go back and work out at four, and then do it all over again each day. Where you say, eh, maybe not today. Maybe maybe I'll take it easy today. Or has that ever happened? I give myself a Sunday off. Take my take my daughter. We go out to eat sometimes, but usually just uh, Monday through Sunday, and you know, take days off if I have to go travel or, or do something business wise. Who pushes you on the days when you when you're maybe not feeling it, or is it all just kind of internal? Yeah. Um. So I just look at my daughter, and you know. Uh, Knowing I gotta go get it, and uh, I got, I got a little one to feed, and you know, just, just staying motivated, staying hungry, and you know, just never being complacent. Derek, have you always worked this hard, or did there come a point where you understood that, like, I need to embrace this working out stuff away from actually being on the field to be the best I can be? Um, I think there's always, always been me. I mean, since a kid, um, if I'm sitting around the house. Do push up, sit ups, or you know, go run with my cousin when he was in high school, just cause I wanted to to work out. I just love working out. I love being fit. Um, love staying in shape. Um, I, I love the game. So I feel like I'm sitting around. I'm not doing better. If somebody out working me. So that's always the mindset I always had. Did people you see having football taken away with the injury last year. Did it change your mindset or your approach at all? And in, in coming back and wanting to do more. Yeah, anything, something like that, like traumatic happens, it, it, it definitely changes you and um, you, know, you, you, you appreciate the game more. Of course, I miss my teammates having that team camaraderie and, you know, just, just being away, you know, with a bone, you got to let it heal on its own. So, you know, it, it takes time and, and things like that. And, you know, you just, you know, want to make sure you taking care of your body, doing everything possible. So when the time comes again, you know, you prepare and you're ready. That the Titans would be open to, to working on a new contract with you. Would you be excited about that? How would you feel about the idea of working on a new contract with the Titans? Um, I mean, it's always good to get a promotion at your job. When you think so, you get a promotion. That's always good. But um, yeah, man, I'm just trying to work through that. I mean, I'm still, currently still on a contract, and if that's the, if that what the future holds, then yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that'd be great. Now, videos out there, already been getting questions. With the hair. That's been a question with everybody. I wore it down out of the ponytail. Everybody was going crazy, and um, I don't know. I might switch it up this year. Never know. Stay tuned. Any reason? Huh? Any reason behind it? No, not really. I just want to switch it up. I've had it in that little whatever anybody calls it uh, for a while now. So I just want to switch it up. What's the best feedback you've ever gotten from one of the, your IG videos, from whether it's a fan or, or you know anyone? Like, uh, I mean, people just, I, mean, I get so many questions, like I said last year, kids just asking me about workouts, asking what can they do to do better, and I just try to put it out there so they can see what I'm doing to try to motivate them, and um, you know, they can learn something from it. What's 
What's your initial impression, I guess, of Hassan Haskins? And what, what, what's it like for you when a young guy comes in? You spend a lot of time with them, answer any questions they might have, or how's that relationship go? Um, yeah, I was excited when we got him. Um, you know, Hassan's a beast. I actually got to uh, catch uh, his game against Ohio State where he went off. And um, you know, seeing him in person, he's a big dude. Um, he's a solid dude. And just seeing him out there, I can tell him everything is coming natural to him. I told him, don't try to get too overwhelmed. Just take it day by day. Derek, why the decision to train on your own as opposed to doing the team stuff here during the voluntary portion? Um, well, in uh, 2020, whenever uh, COVID hit, you know, we had to train by ourselves, and I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I got to go work out when I wanted to, whether it was twice a day or three times a day or twice a day and go to the field. And then last year, I, I did the same thing. So I just felt like if it ain't broke, no, don't fix it and you know, continue to do those things. I'll communicate with the coaches and they knew what was going on and I talked to them every now and then, so everything was good. I know you wouldn't want to make an excuse at all for the playoff game, but obviously you have like four days out here on the field to come back in. Do yeah. you feel like a your old self or like a different running back now coming back than than you did in that short period of time? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I have time away. I've been training like crazy and doing everything I can to, you know, get my body right and, you know, just, I just been working, you know, and through that time, you know, I was off for like nine, 10 weeks and, you know, just coming back, you know, um, I, I felt good, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't play well enough and there's no excuse, you know, I, I got to be better and I should have been better, but yeah, I feel good now. When you look at what you were able to do the season before the injury and even leading up to the injury, like it's safe to kind of call you unstoppable. Have you kind of look at, looked at that injury like as a challenge to show yourself that, you know, you could get back to, to where you were and prove the people who are doubting you. you. You look at that as a challenge. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I get motivated by, by anything. I mean, something can motivate me, you wouldn't even know it. So, you know, that definitely motivated me. Um, and, you know, you know the, the doubters, whatever they want to be, I'm, I'm definitely motivated. I'm ready to go. So we're going to see. Carol, coming off the season last year, what have you been doing this off season to maybe try to, you know, in, improve and expand your game for this year? Uh, I just, you know, been doing what I do, just working as hard as I can. Um, you know, I know the expectations are high for me, like they always are. Um, so that's pretty much all I've been doing is just grinding this whole off season. You know, I used my my trip to the Pro Bowl as my vacation, and then after that, I just been grinding because I know that this is just another big year for me to go out there, you know, and just keep improving. Um, so yeah, I've just been working on everything. What do you feel like Harold is, is next for you in your career? Uh, just, you know, refining my game, you know, in all areas, you know, making more of an impact, you know, as a coverage player as well. Um, and then just, you know, refining my tools, just rushing the passer, you know, being a, you know, keep growing as, you know, a gap and a half in the run game type of player, um, setting the edge and being able to play outside and inside. Oh yeah, no, I think it'll be awesome. Um, I'm excited, man. Like, I'm just like beyond excited to get out there, get in some game action with, you know, all my boys on the front. Um, we just got to keep improving, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, you either getting better, or you're getting worse, and you know, I feel like each day we're just we just got to focus on coming out here, getting better, and I think the sky's the limit for us. That was an awfully great season for you. For what's what's next as a group? <sighs> Just like I said, just keep improving. That's what's next. Um, you know, you can always get better um, at anything. Um, and I think that's what our focus is, just coming out here, taking advantage of every single rep we get um, and improving. Um, so, yeah. What can you guys do to get better as far as generating more turnovers as a defense? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's always uh, a big emphasis for us. Um, just, you know, working on, uh, you know, at the top of the rush, finishing, farm, reaching, whatever you got to do to get the ball out. Um, and just making it a point of emphasis at every practice so it becomes a habit, uh, you know what I'm saying? So when you get to the game, it's just second nature to go after the ball. Harold, is the, is the confidence of the whole defense a little different this year, given the fact y'all had some success, especially more as it went a year ago? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like with every rep that we took last year, um, our confidence just grew and grew and grew. And then by the end of the season, it was just our confidence was through the roof. And our confidence still is through the roof. But that's because, you know, we just prepare so hard. And, you know, with, with great preparation, you have that confidence. Um, and that's just what our focus is right now, is just preparing um, and just trying to get better. So when that season comes, you know, our confidence is sky high so we can go out there and perform. Ryan, how nice is it to have 
Derek back, and you know, obviously he's been working out, but to have him back for these couple of days. Yeah, it's good to see Derek. Obviously, you know, we we know Derek's been getting ready to go mentally and physically. So, uh, you know, anytime he comes out here, it's good to have him back and and have him working with us. Derek said that he actually talked to you, I guess, at a signing in Alabama or some some event in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Said he said that you were in a dark place, and he kind of said the same for him. Can you? call anything of that conversation and kind of how you guys have talked through all that? Yeah, you know, I kind of hit on that in my first one that got overshadowed by some other stuff. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, just had to work through it, you know. I think um, we we all knew the potential we had and, and the way the way it ended hurt. So had to work through some of that. And um, it wasn't easy, you know, just but had to be intentional about it and, and keep processing it, keep working through it. and. You know, ultimately, use it as fuel for for this year. You know, we're kind of in a similar spot, so we're able to to connect in that way and and um, communicate and, and really help each other a little bit. Do you find a point where you kind of like put a cap on it? Okay, that's the past. Now it's time to move forward, or do you? Kind yeah, of no doubt. I've character? I've uh, like I said, it's a scar that I'll carry with me. But uh, I'm looking forward to to this year. You know, using it as fuel as I move forward. But something I'll always remember. Like I said, it's always there. But at the same time. I've, I've dealt with it. It's in the past, and now I'm using it as fuel to move forward. How do you know like you the off season? Because how do you feel like the off season went? I know a day left, but how do you like what you've done? Maybe what do you have to build on? Maybe heading into training camp. Yeah, we've done a lot of great stuff. You know, I'm proud of our guys. The way we've come out, competed each and every day, um, made a lot of progress. You know, a lot of new faces around here, and to see those guys come out, learn the playbook, um, learn the way we do things, and um, we're learning each other as players, right? I'm learning how Chig runs. I'm learning how Austin runs. Um, you know, learning trailing a little bit. So just a, a bunch of new faces that Josh, you know, guys that, that haven't been around here much, um, but learning how they move, how they run routes, and, and how they fit in our, our system. And our guys have, have worked extremely hard and are going out there and competing and, and making plays. I've seen a lot of progress from all position groups throughout this spring. So it gives me a lot of excitement moving forward as we you know, take advantage of the last couple of days here and then carry that momentum into the training camp. We know you've modeled some of your own off-season workouts after Derek's. What, what, <laughs> what do you think when you watch his stuff and see people react to it? Yeah, I mean, Derek's obviously built built differently. You know, you not a lot of guys walking around on planet Earth looking like, like Derek, you know. So uh, obviously the things he can do are are next level in a lot of different areas. So it's always fun to, to see, you know, what, what he's doing out there and obviously the people love it. Traylon hadn't been out here, I'm sure, as much as he would have liked, I guess, over the course of the last couple of weeks. Have you still been able to work with him, talk with him through some things where when training camp starts, you can feel like you can hit the ground running? Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations, you know, as we're watching the tape, you know, talking through the reps that other guys had and um, and communicating it, just making sure, you know, he's hearing it, what, what I'm looking for, uh, I'm kind of hearing what he's thinking. And um, obviously the best thing is to have him out there on the field, you know, working with us, but uh, that's not the case. So you got to make make uh, make do with what you got and, and make the best out of what you have. So uh, we're communicating, and then whenever time comes for him to to be out there running with us, then we'll take advantage of those reps. How much do you usually gather up the guys during the dead period before training camp to throw a little bit and get a little refresher? Is that even more important this year because you've got so many new faces? Um, I mean, it's always an opportunity. You know, I think that. Uh, you know, anytime you get a chance to get together and, and learn each other and, and spend some time together, get those reps in the bank, it helps. Um, I feel like this this spring we've got a ton of, of great reps uh, and against the defense, right? So it's not just routes on air. It's against the defense, against the defender, and um, that changes a lot of things, right? You know, I mean, obviously routes on air is the start of it, but being able to run those routes against the defense and seeing how guys come out with contact, how they are able to shake defenders uh, on different types of routes, in-breakers, out-breakers, all that stuff. So, um, these reps are, are the most important, in my opinion, and, and just learning learning guys. Uh, but obviously, the routes on your help. That period you ran down at the far end with the continental routes, <clears throat> how much from the start of that 10 minutes or 12 minutes to the end can you, I don't want to say master something, but what's the gain from the start to the end on that very specific thing? Yeah, I mean, we're just insulin. So, you know, it's the first time we're running through those things. Um, Got to work out the kinks, and, and guys are – are talking, communicating all the different looks and how we're coming out of it, where the ball should be. Um, yeah, so there's definitely a learning curve uh, for everybody. And then as as you go and the reps start to stack, guys should be watching the guys in front of them, learning from the rep in front, and um, you know becoming more familiar with all the different looks. The more reps we get. What have you kind of seen from 
Chiga Conquo kind of coming along here. Uh, threw a couple nice balls to him, a couple touchdowns in the seven on seven period. So just how he's come along and your connection and, and chemistry with him on the field. Yeah, Chick's done a great job for us. Obviously, he's a fun guy to be around. Uh, he's out here, he's working hard, just like everybody else, but uh, made some big strides this spring. I'm proud of him, the pr proud of the way he's come in, uh, learned uh, what to do, and we'll continue to push him on that. And uh, but just physically, you know, to see his size, his strength, his speed, he's, how he's able to play through contact, uh, he definitely gives us another weapon. Last season, you had a revolving door at receiver, tight end, th throughout training camp, throughout the season. Led to probably your worst season as a tight end. Does that concern you with Traylon's injury and the changeover at wide receiver that it hasn't been completely consistent as who you'll probably throw to in the games? I'm not concerned. Um, you have to go out there and, and make the plays regardless of, of what's going on. So um, I'm proud of the guys who have been out there and the progress we've made. Some guys were here last year, but we've had a lot of good reps, and I think we've gotten better, even the guys that, that were here last year. So um, excited for the progress we've made and, and look forward to carrying it in training camp. You get kind of an idea of what he said that he was really excited about getting the opportunity to work on the field and everything with you. How has he attacked that, or how have you guys together attacked that process, getting that chemistry, that trust? Yeah, it's still, we're still learning each other. You know, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun for me getting to know him personally off the field and then getting to know him as a – as a player, so just reading his body language, see how he comes in and out of things. Um, you know, had a had a rep today that that was a great learning rep for me, and, and how he comes out. You know, I think how I re read it with a lot of guys. Uh, you know, my, my timing uh, wasn't the same with him. So just those little little things that you probably don't notice from the outside, but you know, every rep that I get and I can file that away and, and learn from it. And um, he's got such such a savvy, you know feel for, for running routes, his route craft and how he's able to use his size, use his strength and, and quickness at the top of routes to get open. So uh, all that just takes a little bit of time. Got to see it a few times, whether it's on tape or in person. And um, that way we're on the same page and I can anticipate where he's going to be at. When he, when he comes to correct something, you'll already know what, he, what he's talking about. Praise your self-awareness. Uh, how important is something like that to you? Um, well, I guess it's a good thing to be self-aware. Um, you know, I try to try to learn from every rep, you know, good or bad. Um, and a lot of times, you know, right after it, I can, you know, take a step back and evaluate it, or try to at least, try to evaluate it for what it is as opposed to what, what just happened, you know. So um, I definitely think it helps. And then when you go back and you watch the tape, you know, you're able to, uh, to confirm it, you know, maybe uh, cement it in. But we're able to kind of take a step back on the field, you can learn from it within the practice, right? Um, or on game day within a game, you know, so you can make the correction there as opposed to having to, you know, you know, get to the coach or get back um, to the film room and, and watch it on tape. What do you do between the time you walk out of here tomorrow or, or Thursday until training camp starts to try to gather guys to throw and maybe do you stress to others show up ready to go when camp starts? Yeah, no doubt. It's an important time of year, you know, obviously, this is important, but if you uh, you know sit on your butt for the next five weeks and and come into uh, to camp out of shape, then that's going to set us back. So um, you know it's going to be important for guys to to take some time away, um, prepare yourself mentally uh, for a for a long grind of a season. Um, but at the same time, you got to get ready to go. Make sure you come in um, at your strongest, you know, your most conditioned, ready to run. It's going to be hot. It's going to be long practices, but uh, we have to take advantage of the days we have. So if we can come in. Um, with a full head of steam and, and um, be in shape, be in condition and, and ready to go, it's definitely going to help us. What impressions have you got so far of Kyle Phillips, Ryan? Kyle's a, definitely a great rounder. He's got some quickness, uh, some agility, uh, you know, getting to learn his, his uh, craft you know, as, he, uh, as he learns our offense and, and kind of see where he fits in. But definitely he's flashed for me a few times and, and seen some good things. So you know, just definitely keep the pressure on him as he, uh, as he learns what we're doing. And, um, if, I think if he does that, he'll continue to make plays. That Hi, Teresa. Hi, Mike. How nice is it to have the veterans like Derek, uh, Harold, Bud, and some of those guys who back this week to wrap this uh, offseason program up? It's nice to have everybody. You know, it's nice to have our team. It's, you know, we've talked about this before. Any chance that you have to, to get players on the field, working together, communicating, being coached, I think it's a great opportunity. Grade how they come back. Uh, I know, obviously, you take a look at them and see how physically they are. But do you look to see if these guys have been working to, or do you just trust that they're going to do that regardless? Well, I mean, I think that that's you know, I, no, I don't like look. There's no test. There's no measurement. I mean, I'm, 
would imagine it seemed by all accounts that they had been working. I would imagine they had, and I'm sure they have. And then when training camp comes, we'll have the same conditioning test that we've always had, and, and we'll get to work. Available. He had a pretty good day today. How is he coming along? It seems like he's elevating as far as like where he's. he's yeah, working. I mean, I think that um, just from those rookies, I think you mentioned Shig. It's just a, it's a consistency thing. As the information starts to pile up, right, and we go from first and second down to third down, now into the red zone. Uh, just continuing to explain to those guys how how things change situationally, and um, Chig really took advantage of some of his reps today and you know when we work down there tomorrow it'll, it'll be different and you know I'm sure that they'll you know try to come back and and compete and and get him covered but I think that that was you know uh, some good really good signs of making some plays that are on schedule and then also being available when when plays went off schedule like they do so many times down in the red zone with the playbook and when you see from Bud Dupree out there he was talking about how he feels great all that stuff. Yeah, it's hard to really evaluate um, any of those front seven guys uh, on defense and the, the linemen, uh, but looks good. Looks good to be in good spirits. Saw him through, you know, obviously individual and, and then some of the, you know, the team stuff, but that's not even at a pace that, you know, and that's that goes for Bud, that goes for Harold, that goes for any of them. When you work a, a period like you did uh, down there, I, I don't know if it's a red zone necessarily, but the to receiver mm -hmm. period with the quarterback. How much do you expect those guys to have that specific thing down that you worked on for 10 or, t or 12 minutes? Or how much is that uh, just, a, just a building block? Well, I mean, the meetings are scheduled as such that there's new installation. Uh, so what happens sometimes in practice is you go with an installation and then there's individual where you may be working on uh, one particular route or a, an area of that route versus man or zone. And then there's part of the route that there's a combination. It's no different on defense if you're working with two guys. And so, you know, we try to break that down from individual, you know, to a group period where guys can work. Uh, and then ultimately into the team setting uh, where there's much more body. So um, my expectations are that, you know, if they, if they get it, you're not going to, master every look in, in that amount of time. That's why we'll do it throughout the course of the next couple of days and then um, you know, do different things like that during training camp. And then if the look presents itself during the team period, um, you know, we can use that to, to revert back to and, and try to fix some of the things. And it's, it's just slowing the things down and trying to get a you know, teaching presentation when you wrap up here this week, Mike, the, I know the rookies stay a couple extra weeks. What do they do during that time um, before they head off themselves? Well, they'll finish the um, the player engagement program, which is critical uh, that, that we offer, that Chicky Giassi offers and uh, Mitch and Dr. Sheila and um, all those things that we think are critical to, to success for, for young players off the field. Uh, but most importantly, they'll train. You know, they'll be in here and they'll train and hopefully we can get some some heat that these guys can train in and they can lift and run um, and, and get them caught up a little bit. Remember, they're, they're a few weeks behind just from the draft and, and some of the other things. So just from an overall conditioning standpoint, we feel like that's, um, that's critical. Ryan's self-awareness. How much is self-awareness overall a quality you need to see in guys that sometimes when you're making a correction, they they say, yeah, yeah, I could see that I was doing that or I knew I was doing something. That's just trying to bridge a gap between the way that, that one person sees it as a coach and, and the way that another player sees it or a person sees it as a player. Uh, try to see it through the same set of eyes. And, you know, one thing that's, that, you know, probably easier said than done in, in coaching is, is how you allow players to, to make mistakes. You know, we're going to make them. Hopefully we don't make too many of them and we don't make the same, same ones twice. But... You know, as a coach, you have to just be careful um, not to react. And, you know, it's, it's, like I said, easier said than done. But, you know, you have to try to allow them to make mistakes and, and see if they, can, if they can explain it to you why they you know, made a mistake. Then you really don't have to coach them and you can, you can move on. And if they're not sure what they saw or what happened, then, then that's an opportunity to coach. Ryan said when he came back that it was a really couple, a tough couple of months for him 
after the Cincinnati game, even went through therapy to kind of get himself in the right mindset. Have you seen a different Ryan, the same Ryan? How has he responded since being back in the building? I think he's, you know, it was difficult for everybody. And I think Ryan, you know, Ryan certainly has come back with um, great energy, great excitement, I think great leadership. Um, his communication with guys that have been here and the guys that are that are new to our team uh, has been really good. And, uh, you know, I hope that that continues. You guys spoke last year kind of thematically about a broader conceptual understanding defensively, uh, one position understanding the, the rest of the defense better. How did you do at that? How are you at that now? And, and what kind of tangible difference have you seen from it? I thought it was better. You know, I mean, obviously it was some of the stuff that we did last year was better. I think some of the stuff that we worked on in the off season, you know, as much as we worked on ball disruption, I think we were second and third in the league and um, and PBUs, you know, by secondary and linebacker players. So uh, it's good to see the stuff that we work on. Um, and then, you know, a lot of stuff that we have to continue to work on, but I think that there was, you know, a step in the right direction. How do you feel about the collection of talent at the wide receiver position right now? I think they're working hard. I think that they uh, compete, they're good size. I think the guys are taking advantage of their opportunity. You know, I think Nick probably looks better than he did at this point in time. Um, you know, Robert's working his tail off to, you know, to get back. He's doing everything that we ask him to do. Um, you know, Cody's showing up. We got some guys in the slot, so um, I, I think they're all kind of pushing each other. And as you can see, take advantage. You know, Josh took advantage of his opportunities today and to go in there and be evaluated and, and scored some touchdowns in seven on seven. Are you able to? Because I know urgency was something with Fitzpatrick in, in the past. Are you with what you're seeing out here? Like, are you able to measure whether or not he's playing with more of a sense of urgency? Yeah, I mean, I, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think Dez has had a, has, a, has had a good off season. I think he really has, and I think he understands um, what the expectations is going to be for for here and in training camp, and and what's going to be required of all those guys to to find a role and, and to to help them and, and give them a chance to make this team. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think it's always good when those guys get together and they can share their pointers, things they see, things they might do different. Um, it's a big part of the NFL is kind of learning from other guys, whether it's watching them on film um, or getting together in the offseason. So um, I'm sure he took something from it, so we'll see. He's probably going to play at a, at a lighter weight this year. Was that something that, you know, you guys collectively came? Was it something from him? How did yeah, you... I think it's just comfort level where he kind of feels confident um, to maximize his ability. It's something we always talk about from top of the roster to the bottom of the roster where we see guys. Um, it's an ongoing discussion, just what they can maintain and ultimately to be able to maximize their ability. When you get everyone back for the first time, I guess what are some of the first things that you're looking at? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're starting from ground zero with everybody and started a little bit sooner for the guys that have been here. Um, but even those veteran guys who are coming back, like we're, we're still trying to lay the foundation, right? It's still the spring. Um, and that will continue early in training camp is laying the foundation, creating our culture, um, building our identity, figuring out who we are. Um, but again, you got to start from the from the bottom and work your way up with everybody. How can Zach benefit from an off season? You know, first off season with the team, Zach Cunningham. Uh, you know, starting with mini camp and looking ahead to camp. What, what you yeah, do? I think. Uh, I mean, anytime you come in mid year, it's tough, especially when you get thrown in the fire and you got to go. Um, so I think. Him just being here, being here throughout training camp, um, continuing to become familiar with the players and the coaches. Um, that's a big part of it. I've, I speak on relationships all the time. Um, and I think that's a huge part of it, uh, especially with his teammates, the guys he's going to be out there with, building that trust with them. Um, and then ultimately just the understanding of the scheme and kind of what we're asking those guys to do. How do you, how do you incorporate the new guys, guys who are back for mini camp into the program, I guess, today as you're, as you're getting to wrap up. Yeah, we're going, you know. So, I mean, we're going to put the ball down, do what we do, and we're going. So, it's not like we're starting over in terms of uh, install, all the everything else. Like, they're going to have their plays where they're going to be mixed in there. Um, but we're going. It's, it's on them to be professionals and come in and kind of know where we're at, understand it. The good thing for us is they've been here a year. So, there's some familiarity there for most of them. Um, but... I mean, it's not like we are slowing down the install, so to speak, for those guys. 
see as the challenges for, for Caleb, I guess, both, both physically and, and maybe even, I guess, maybe even more importantly, mentally, too, since he's played so little the last last couple of years? Yeah, it's, it's just, it's experience, right? Like, the more you play, the more you find out, the more uh, things happen to you, good or bad. Um, so I think just learning by doing, right? And it's been great to have him out here to do some things and go through some processes and understand the different variations of our scheme and things he, that come up that he, he's going to see. Um, it'll be a whole different animal once we get to training camp and there's speed to it, right? So, I mean, it's, it's just the experience of going out there consistently, seeing different things, executing different defenses, whatever it might be. And I mean, it's learning every single day for all of these guys. Shane, to say starting ground zero, I mean, is there, is there a confidence level for the guys you're bringing back? And, and for you, that the, the defense did make real steps last year and has something to build on? I hope so, right? I hope so. I think uh, those guys developed a really good chemistry up front. Uh, I think they all understand each other's skill sets and how they marry up with each other, how they benefit one another. Um, so I hope there's some confidence and then Obviously, we're starting from the ground, but hopefully there's some familiarity there where things can speed up a little bit quicker, progressing to 200 level, 300 level, whatever that might be. But absolutely, I, I hope they're all confident. Um, regardless of the success we had last year, I hope they all have that kind of edge to them when they go out there and take the field. How much of a luxury is the depth at corner right now adding Adam McCreary? And yeah, it's great. It is. It is. I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Paul, these guys – there's going to be a lot of competition from who's starting to who's making the back end of the roster, those spots. Um, so it's, it's a great benefit when that competition is there throughout the unit. And there's clearly competition, I think, from top to bottom with the majority of our position groups right now. So it's only going to make them better. It is. It's only going to make them better. It's only going to challenge them. It's only going to force them to become more consistent each and every day. And they're getting evaluated on everything from the meeting room to walk through to jog through to team to one on ones. Once we get to training camp, like we evaluate everything to make those hard decisions, obviously, come training camp. You know, whether it's Elijah, Caleb, or Roger, what have you liked from the progress of them just collectively through the offseason? Yeah, I think that they're just understanding. They're. I feel like they're a little bit more poised. It's not as sporadic, not as all over the place. Um, just with some of their understanding, being a younger group, um, I, I feel like they've matured in that aspect in, in terms of really just grasping what we're asking them to do um, and then ultimately taking the scheme and breaking it down into being more detailed and technicians out there, which it's really what it turns into as a corner. You got to understand the scheme, but you better understand the technique and fundamentals in order to cover your guy or execute in zone coverage or whatever that might be. So I just feel like there's a little bit more poise from that group right now. Last year you guys talked about defenders knowing more than their role in the scheme, understanding conceptually, mm -hmm. I think was the term you used. Where's this defense in that now? Yeah, I think we're getting there. Um, I think the some of the carryover from last year helps with that. Um, but it, it's a big part of what we do. Like, they got to know what the guy next to them is doing because it's going to help them do their job. Um, so I think that's something that grows the more and more we get out there, Paul, and the more and more we do, we do things as a unit. Harold is such a self-motivating player given what he's done and his trajectory and obviously coming up with a big contract. What's your challenge to him this year? Yeah, as to... Do everything you did last year and do more, right? Like last year wasn't a one hit, hit wonder. And he knows that, I know that, and we got to make sure that doesn't happen, right? So the expectations are going to be as high as ever for him, which they should be. And like you said, there's probably nobody with higher expectations of Harold than Harold. Um, but at the same time, we got to make sure we're pushing them, giving them things, finding ways to create those success, successful plays and that production for him. What about uh, Dupree? What, what's next for him? What's the next level of expectation that you have, you know, with him being fully healthy? Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Now that he's kind of fighting through all the knee stuff, everything else, like it'll be good to get him out here healthy and get rolling, right? Like we'll see where it goes as, as we get into this week and training camp, but I'm excited about Bud. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity for him this season coming back, and I think he's in a good place mentally with how he's feeling right now. Um, so hopefully we can progress and get going pretty quickly with him.
Wrapping up this uh, off-season program situation, how is uh, you so many new faces, tight ends and wide receivers? Uh, are you starting to get a feel uh, on the field for what some of these guys can do and how you might be able to use them? Yeah, it's been a fun process, you know, and going through the different phases of the off-season, being able to do a little bit more and more with, uh, you know, with each phase. It's been fun to watch those guys develop some chemistry and work together and uh, certainly enjoy getting to know the, the new guys and seeing where they might fit in their, their roles. So uh, it's been a good process. From your perspective, how are Ryan and uh, Austin Hooper, how, how are they doing as far as getting that chemistry? We see them working on the side a bit. How is that process going from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's been great. You know, they take advantage of the extra time that they have to be able to uh, work in some one-on-one -on -one situations and, you know, making sure those guys understand where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be there is a big piece of, of the timing and efficiency of the pass game. So it, it's been good to see those guys working. I think they're doing a nice job. What kind of steps do you want to see Des Fitzpatrick and Racy McMath taking here too? Yeah, I think consistency is the name of the game for any young player. And as you transition from a rookie into your second year, you know, anticipating some things a little bit more, understanding the system a little bit cleaner, uh, you know, provides that opportunity to be more consistent. So just chasing consistency. How do you think Ryan has done this offseason here? I think it's been a great offseason. I think he's done a nice job stepping into that leadership role. And, you know, he's always been the leader of this offense, but certainly having, uh, you know, a little bit louder voice and, and making sure that he's getting what he's looking for and some certain route concepts and things like that. Uh, I think he's done a nice job of helping those new guys that we talked about transition into their roles and understand where they fit in the big picture. So Ryan's been doing a nice job. We're lucky to have him. With whatever limitations Woods has right now, are you able to, to get a clear picture of what you can do with him anyway, or will, will that still become clearer kind of as you get into the season, you think? Yeah, Robert's got such a great football mind, so being able to talk through some of those things uh, has been really beneficial, and certainly he has some application and things he did in Los Angeles that carry over to here, and uh, you know, so that's an ongoing process, but something that we've enjoyed. How does Derek look to you when uh, he got here and ready, for, ready to roll? It looks really out of shape. I don't know if he's going to be ready. Yeah, he, look, he, he looks great. Looks great, taking my workout program. Why is it important to kind of have that identity regardless of who or who isn't back there? Why do you guys harp on that so much? I think it helps you rely more on your identity and your process than who's out there playing for you, right? And uh, we know that this is a game that you deal with a lot of adversity from an injury standpoint. Sometimes personnel decisions have to be made and you no longer have pieces available. If you can chase consistency in that identity, just like we ask our young players to chase consistency in their production, uh, then you can, you can deal with some of the ebbs and flows of injuries or personnel changes uh, a little bit more smoothly. And I, I think, again, that's something Coach Vrabel does an outstanding job of, is each week he says this is what it's going to take to win the football game. That's not predicated on who we have in the huddle. That's predicated on what we believe is winning football around here. Picking up on that, Todd, you said last time we talked to you, I, maybe half jokingly, you learned not to become too reliant on a personnel grouping based on what happened last year. Were you going into the season thinking you'd be more three wide than you had been previously, and did, did that evolve based on what happened at wide receiver? You know, I think there were some things that we were in process of figuring out. Uh, you know, what our identity was was going to be uh, from a personnel standpoint, and and certainly there were some. Uh, some pieces that we thought you know might be there a little bit more uh, consistently and weren't, um, and that's that's the name of the game in the NFL. So I think it's something that's going to change quite a bit uh, throughout the process of the year. And you know we have some new pieces here. I'm excited to see how they come along and how uh, that chemistry builds and and where this thing winds up. It's a long process with the league, but where have you seen him maybe make strides just in the last? You know, throughout the course of this offseason program, and maybe what's what's next for him? Oh, he's made great strides. You know, just from his ability to to run the huddle and the line of scrimmage, he's grown every single day. He's gotten more and more comfortable every day. Uh, you know, I, I really love where the chemistry of that room is, and uh, you know, it's been fun to watch him kind of grow each and every opportunity he gets out here on the grass. You mentioned Ryan helping out some of the newer players get up to speed, but how is he balanced doing that and also getting himself ready and making the necessary jump from last year? Yeah, I think they I think they're hand in hand, you know, working some of the techniques and some of the ball placement and seeing different schemes uh, that pairs with 
some of the new faces and where he expects them versus certain coverages and things like that. So I think it's kind of uh, all encompassing and I think that it's something that's benefited Ryan just as much as it has the new guys. How does it work uh, between him knowing what he needs to work on and improve and then you kind of telling him, here's what we'd like to see more of you. How, how does that balance work? Yeah, well, Ryan is in his career, he's a vet, you know, and, and so a lot of times when I go to give him a coaching point, he already knows that that's something that he needs to work on or he self-corrects. I've, I've said uh, multiple times to these guys, one of the best traits a veteran can have is self-awareness. And if I don't have to convince you that you need to fix something, then we can just work on fixing it as opposed to uh, having a debate about whether it's a problem or not. And, and Ryan is a very self-critical player. Uh, he's somebody that is, is going to be looking for ways to improve his game before I even challenge him with it, which makes that process of, of enhancing his game uh, that much more fun and more efficient. Has Cheek done in, in learning the blocking aspect of the game and, and how important is that for him to, to you know, kind of fully grasp? Yeah, Cheek's done a nice job. We've asked him to do a lot and we've, we've thrown a lot at him, and I think that he's handled it well, and I think he's hungry and, and eager to please. Um, you know, there's obviously some new roles and some new uh, assignments that we've given him, and those are always going to come with a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, but I think he's doing a nice job with it. What have you seen in? Uh, sorry, uh, what what have you seen in Kyle Phillips and how he's kind of picked up the offense to this point? Yeah, he has a really good feel for uh, coverages and understanding where he fits in different zones. Uh, you know, Kyle's a guy that's a competitor, and so he wants to get open uh, by any means possible. And so you see that route tenacity and kind of uh, route craft to him, which has been fun to see. Um, you know, like any young guy, he, there's there's a, a learning process there in terms of, uh, you know, having the timing of, of getting open in certain schemes. But I think he's coming along well, and I think he's got a high football IQ. Have you gotten any faster, Todd, with your weaponry? I think I think that's always a, a kind of ebb and flow of different positions. And you know, when you asked me that last time I was standing up here, I told you in some positions I think we we definitely uh, you know have improved our speed. And and uh, you know, I'm excited to see how different pieces uh, can play faster as they understand their assignment a little bit clearer. What, what does Mason Kinsey have to do to get himself to a point where you know he could be a contributor? He could be a guy. In, in, get a significant plans on. Yeah, I think it's just to continue to develop and chase that consistency that we talked about with Racy and Dez. You know, all those young receivers, uh, just looking for them to understand their role uh, and play as consistent and dependable as possible. What have you seen from Hassan Hoskins so far, and how do you expect him to fit into the offense? Hassan's done a great job of just trying to be a sponge and take on everything uh, that we've, we've thrown his way. Uh, you know, he's done a nice job of, of handling some of the adversity and, and the growing pains of being a younger player and not making the same mistakes uh, twice. And so that's something we ask of our young guys. We understand there are going to be mistakes. There will be an adjustment uh, period to this, you know, this offense and this level of play. Uh, but let's make new mistakes each day. Has there been maybe a, what would have maybe been the points of emphasis uh, for your group this offseason? Yeah, I, I think we're trying to uh, obviously get better on fundamentals and technique. Uh, I think when you always look back and, and what you want to do during each and every offseason is just try to get back to the basics and uh, work on fundamentals and technique and try to get better from there and then work into the team group setting and, and just work on getting better then too. But uh, it's just basically getting better at the little things right now. What does Trenton Cannon maybe give you guys in, in the return game? Oh, I got a big smile on my face for that one right there. Obviously, we're excited about Trenton, um, not only in the return game, but any other phase that we have him on. He has been a, a really good gunner in the National Football League. Uh, he's done some really good things on punt return, too. But uh, I think, you know, when you look at Trenton, everyone gets to see some big returns out of him when he was at Carolina and some other places that he's been, San Francisco. Uh, just a dynamic one cut kickoff returner that's going to get north and south as quickly as possible. And obviously, he's got great speed, too. What do you look for, maybe instincts wise, when you bring these rookies in? And most of those guys have probably never played special teams in college or, high, or even high school. Yeah. And you're trying to say that, hey, this is your ticket to make the team. Yeah, well, you know, we're obviously looking at a bunch of different traits for them in their, in their college football, um, you know, tape. Some might have never played it before, you know, 
Hassan Haskins has played it, which has been great. Go and take a look at his film, see what he can do. Uh, and then we just go back and look at offense and defensive film and see what type of instincts they have. Uh, you know, can they see the ball? Can they run and tackle? Uh, can they make cuts on kickoff return? Can they catch punts? Uh, but we really got to sit down and talk with those young guys early on. Uh, and Chase and I have made it a point to bring in each and every rookie and sit down and talk with them about that stuff and let them know that, hey, we obviously want you to start on offense or defense. If that can't happen, you need to make a role on special teams, and this is how you do it. How big a deal was it for you guys to get Randy back for another year? Love Randy. Um, you know, Randy had a consistent season for us last season, and I know he's going to strive to get better. Um, you know, and our players really like Randy. You know, he's one of those guys that's going to run out there um, and go and try to make all of his kicks, but uh, our players enjoy him. I know Brett and Morgan have a really good relationship with him, so I was excited to get him back. Does he need to get better, you know, looking ahead to the next season? Yeah, we're always looking to get better at, at a range from 40 to 49 yards. You know, that's where we call our money zone. Uh, if we can be consistent making field goals in that zone, um, you know, we feel like he can have a pretty good season. You know, 50 plus, you know, we want to make those kicks too. But really the money zone is from 40 to 49 yards, so we've really put a focus on that in the offseason for him. Is that a hit you miss? Is it uh, enough hit for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, each season is going to be different. Um, you know, last year we thought we did well, but we need to raise expectations with that uh, and still get better. You know, I know when we went back and looked at some of the things uh, that we felt like we could focus on and really get better at, um, we felt like we got some players that are going to help us with that. How about Kyle Phillips? Uh, what were some of the things you liked about him just from a punt return uh, perspective? Yeah, Kyle, Kyle brings a lot of good things for us. And the one thing that we liked watching him at UCLA is when he caught the ball, he would run and get vertical. There wasn't a lot of dancing around, uh, trying to make too many moves. He was just going to catch it and go upfield, which as a returner, you always want to get. So he has that instinct of catching the ball and not making too many moves for him just to stand still. It's one cut and go. Uh, and then he had showed some speed on the outside and getting to the field a little bit there in the Pac-12. But um, we're going to continue to work with him on just being consistent, catching the football, and then running upfield. And what can you say about Reggie Roberson, uh, Robertson? Rather. Yeah, uh, Reggie's been a, a good surprise for us, You know, not knowing much of what he could do on special teams. Uh, but he's come in here and worked really hard at his craft, and we're excited about him. We're going to put him on as a returner on some things and then just play him as a gunner on punt team. Uh, so, you know, he's going to continue to work hard to find a role for this team, and we're excited about him. Who are the guys you see being in the mix, maybe a punt returner and kick returner? Yeah, I think punt returner wise, it'll be a good mix. You know, Mason Kinsey back there, obviously Kyle Phillips. We're going to work on some other guys that are going to be back there. Amani Hooker could also show his face a little bit, um, especially when we need a guy just to go back there and catch the ball. So those three will be battling out, and who knows, there might be another guy that'll come into the mix. Uh, kickoff return, Trenton Cannon, Reggie, uh, Kyle Phillips is back there right now. Um, even Racy McMath will also get a, get a look at there. Um, but we want guys that obviously are going to catch the ball, run up field, and then the most important thing is hand the ball to our offense. Greg, what does a veteran like A.J. Moore do for your group? He's obviously brought some leadership. And, uh, you know, question about bringing in veteran players uh, is a great one because that guy that will come in who's seen everything beforehand, uh, who's willing to work with rookies, uh, and, and talk to him about their experience that he's had at Houston uh, has always been good. Um, and AJ, if you ever seen him around, he's always got a smile on his face, and he just has fun out there in practice and in meetings. Craig, it looked like uh, Caleb got hurt towards the end of the last time we were out here. Is he back to practice today? Or? Uh, you know, you won't see him out here today, but I'm, I'm sure he's uh, looking back to get on the field um, at any point in time. Um, we're excited to have Caleb. Uh, he had a great college career, even though it was pretty short there at Iowa. Um, but, you know, he, he's going to get healthy at some point in time. And who knows when, but we're excited to get him back. What's Chase maybe bring to the room, and, and is, is he focused on anything in, in particular? 
Yeah, uh, Chase just brings some leadership as far as him being able to play and talk to him about, you know, this guy's won two Super Bowls. He's played in the league for 10 years. Uh, he'll go over there and grab some of the players and talk to them about, hey, this is what I did when I played. So that's always good to have a guy that'll come in there and kind of talk to him about the little tricks and trades that he had when he was a player. Uh, and then just obviously his knowledge of being a coordinator for four years at Carolina um, is going to help out our team.